I'm Amy Shannon, and this is another episode of Exposed Mobility Impaired Denied. Um, it's a, if you've been watching, it's a video series um, that um, I put together so I could be an advocate um, for those who are in mobility impaired. Mobility impaired means that you need to use some type of um, aid uh, to be able to walk around or move around, I should say. Um, some you, it could be temporary and some it, it could be permanent. Um, I'm in a um, electric wheelchair at this point. I, um, I have issues, I have a lot of issues, but um, what puts me in the chair is the fact that um, I have lost sensation in uh, both of my feet, mainly my left foot. So um, it's kind of like it's it's numb and yet parts of it is painful. And then they are very, both of my feet, um, they go to sleep a lot and you can't really wake them up. Um, I have to actually wrap heating pads around them to get the circulation back into my feet. I don't know if I step on something, or sometimes when I walk, I step on something. When my um, when I'm walking around, I usually hold on to something. I usually don't walk too far from my apartment. The longest might be across the hall to the trash room. Um, but when I go out, I use my wheelchair. Um, if I'm with someone or I have to go to a place where uh, my wheelchair will fit, um, or I have a mobility scooter, not all places have um, their, they have accessibility, but it's not always easily access, accessible, excuse me. Um, so, uh, um, but when I can use my mobility scooter outside, I can, um, I'm independent. I can do um, some of the things that I want to do. Um, and if you've been watching any of my series, um, you'll see some of uh, my journeys and my information that I'm trying to get out of there. Excuse me. Um, I also want to apologize. At the time of the recording, I'm still recovering from being ill. It seemed like it was COVID um, or the flu or um, it, the symptoms match COVID, but I guess it matches other things as well. Um, so I've uh, I learned a lesson that even if you're outside, even if I'm outside, and I'm around people, I should wear a mask. Um, I went out, thought it was fine being outside. I didn't realize that a lot of my friends and family would want to hug me. Um, so uh, that was uh, my error in not wearing a mask. Um, I always wear a mask when I go out. Sometimes I wear a mask just when I'm running around and I'm like, I don't really need to do this there's nobody near me but anyways so at the court time of recording of this i'm still recovering um i finally got my taste back and um but i'm at a, a, a no more fears which i'm very grateful for and nothing like waking up with 102 degree fever um also um but uh now it's just uh, a lingering cough that hurts my chest when I cough, and if I do anything besides just sit down, um, I get out of breath. I get out of breath. Wheeling, uh, using the joystick on my wheelchair to get around the house, uh, apartment, excuse me, I um, get out of breath just putting on clothes. So I'm still recovering and I'm trying to take it easy. So um, doing a video is not terribly difficult. 
sit. <laughs> um, excuse me again. Coffee, gotta say caffeinated. I can finally taste coffee. There's a couple days where I couldn't even, everything I ate tasted like mud. So, and needless to say, I had a lot of soup with a lot of hot sauce. Anyway, um, this video is um, to talk about some letters that I wrote to government officials. Um, I have written uh, emails to um, Jim Tedesco, Senator Tedesco, excuse me, um, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, um, Senator Chuck Schumer, Governor Kathy Hochul, um, Town of Malta Supervisor Cynthia Young, um, and there was a Deputy Supervisor as well in the Town of Malta. Um, some of them were direct emails from me to their email address, and a few were on the website where you can do that contact me thing, and then you get like an automatic reply. So. So far, I have received two email responses, um, which I'm going to share after I read my initial letter. Um, one I, uh, from the governor's office, all I got was that automatic reply that because you put a comment or you submitted a notification. I have yet to hear anything from um, the Senator uh, Chuck Schumer and um, Person go to Gillibrand, excuse me, Gillibrand's offices. Um, I've also written letters to um, um, advocacy groups about um, per disabled persons, um, and even the there are some New York State disability groups I have been writing. Um, I will probably write more letters. I wrote two letters to the editor of the Daily Gazette and the Saratopian, which have yet to be published, if they're going to be published at all. If they do, I will put a link in the description and also make a notification on my Facebook page. Um, please don't forget, uh, if you're watching this for the first time, please subscribe. I am not looking for uh, monetization or anything. I am just kind of looking for support and also um, if others have a story they, they, they wish to tell or they want to talk about um, things like reform for disabled persons, um, they can, you can feel free to do that. Uh, you can email me at amyshan75 at gmail.com and write in exposed uh, mobi mobility impaired denied. And then I'll know what this is about. Um, so I'm going to read the letter that I wrote to the government officials, and then I will um, just read the two responses that I received. Now, in, in responses, you probably have a person who checks their emails and stuff like that. But I could tell that whoever answered the email even if it was on behalf of the person sending it, um, that they pointed out things in my original emails. So it made me know that someone actually read, read it and took thought into how they would respond. Uh, not just a normal form letter. So I just want to say thank you to them ahead of time. Um, excuse me one more time, Happy. Hello, my name is Amy Shannon. Most of my life, I've been able to walk on my own without issue. Well, I was a pigeon toed, was pigeon toed as a child, but that didn't stop me from running around or having my grandmother help me train my feet to walk straighter. More to the point, in 2005, my husband at the time tried to kill me and caused several traumatic brain impact injuries, resulting in a daily chronic migraine, sometimes with aura and sometimes without aura. Since that time, I have experienced some regression in my brain which affects my memory and also how my brain sends signals to the nerves in my body along with other parts of my body. I was finally eligible for SSI and SSD after many years of reapplying and appealing. Once I had at least a year of hand tremors. 
I was able to get SSI. The tremors in my hands eventually spread to my legs, causing spasms and twitches, which could cause me to fall. When I had pain in my hands, I was eventually sent to a rheumatologist and was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. The nurse practitioner that I see said it is unknown how the disease comes about, but she can't rule out the diagnosis that I received from a movement disorder neurologist who, I di who diagnosed me with a functional brain disorder. When I had trouble walking, I started with a hefty four-footed cane. When I couldn't use it because of the pain in my hand and I'm right-handed, I was prescribed a rollator walk, which was nice because it had storage in the seat. And then my feet gave out and I fell a few times on top of my walker. In the meantime, I switched primary care doctors to one who was closer to where I now live. And he sent me to a new neurologist who told me I had loss of sensation in my feet. Sometimes it hurts, sometimes they are numb and cold. He also told me that if I didn't want to fall down, I shouldn't stand up. Needless to say, I didn't go back to him. During the last 19 years, I raised three of my sons who are now grown up and do their best to help me. I suffer from mental health issues of depression, anxiety, and PTSD with occasional panic attacks. I suffer physical issues where I will fall if my feet give out. I have lost a lot of my independence, and I had to stop driving in 2019, something I knew I had to do. My son, William, started to go fund me a while back and raise money so I could get a mobility scooter, and that worked. Then I bought myself a manual wheelchair until I could save for an electric wheelchair. It's not the best of chairs, but it's what I have. There's too many obstacles to go through to get insurance to pay for them, so I saved when I could. I always use my wheelchair or scooter when I go out. Sometimes I can walk around my apartment that I share with two of my sons and my son's fiance. We are all roommates, but I feel like I live with them instead of the other way around. Anyway, with me using a wheelchair, I see things from a new perspective. Last year, I notified my apartment complex management and let them know that the sidewalk ramps were dangerous. In June of this year, still not being fixed, my wheelchair's wheels got stuck and I fell and the chair landed on top of me. I am waiting for the insurance company to contact me. When I go out in a car as a passenger, I make note of sidewalk so I know where I can and, go, can and can't go safely with my, either with my scooter or my chair. I live in Malta, New York, and the main road is Route 9. There are sidewalks in some places and not in others, and some of the ramps are damaged. I know which stores I can shop in and determine if I need to use my wheelchair, not ideal for going shopping, or if my scooter will be able to fit. Excuse me. I have started a video series on YouTube and am going through the do's and don'ts of, and where accessibility is limited. Limited. These are here are my thoughts on changes that need to be made. I have read the over 400 pages of the Americans Disability Act, and it was last updated in 2010. The definition of mobility impaired accessible should be defined and not be vague. Just because something is designed as is designated accessible doesn't mean it is easily accessible. To be mobility impaired means that there are handicapped parking spots, an elevator or lift where there are stairs, and that doors can be opened automatically or with a push of a button. If the building requires security access, the person security access could also unlock the building or have the door open automatically. I have actually created a petition to have um, automatic doors or a button placed on public access accessible buildings. Many times, um, the only time the building is accessible is if someone holds the door for you. I am fortunate that I can still use my legs and sometimes I have to use my arms and legs to hold the door open while I slowly wheel myself inside the building. Exiting is easier because you're pushing out, but when you have to pull and then maneuver your chair around the door as you're opening it, it can be quite difficult. Um, I have seen this not just on um, like public access buildings, you know, like stores and uh, restaurants and various other um, types of public access, but also even the um, post office does not have a door that is accessible. They may have a ramp 
um, but there's no button to push to get in or there is a step up by the door and the doors, they're not automatic. So I would also require that public public buildings, facilities, apartment complexes be mobility impaired, easily accessible. Uh, accessible parking spots. And rem remind you, these is this is my opinion of what I think should change. And I don't think that everything I want um, is going to change. But maybe um, if more people speak up about it or agree with some of my thoughts, you don't have to agree with everything. If you're in a situation where you're mobility impaired, um, some you may not have the luxury of using your legs like I do. Um, I know I'm slowly not being able to. Uh, eventually, I won't be able to really walk around too much, but I am cherishing the moments that I can, even if um, you know it's not ideal. Um, but there are a lot of people just because they can't use their legs at all. Um, it does not mean that they shouldn't be able to go access their favorite grocery store or their restaurant. Um, and there are people who um, can barely use their, their arms and they use an electric wheelchair or some type of uh, wheelchair where to help them get around. If you can't lift your arm to open the door, sometimes they're heavy, sometimes they're light. How are you going to get inside unless you wait for someone to come and get you? So I'm going to move on to my next. Um, yeah, please forgive me. Um, my next category of something that would be nice is accessible parking spots. Accessible parking spots should have non-parking areas on both sides of the parking spots indicated with a blue stripe so that the mobility impaired drivers or passengers can use mobility aids, especially wheelchairs or walkers can get in and out of the car. Many times there are spaces between two spots, but not on each side. And if a mobility impaired person needs assistance, the side they need to get in are closer to the building, that are closer to the building, have curbed sidewalks or some type of landscaping, making it difficult to get out of the car on that side of the parking spot. Um, I'm always a passenger in a vehicle right now. And if I'm in the front seat and there's a handicapped parking spot, but there's no room. It's on the driver's side, the, the space instead of uh, the passenger side. So sometimes my son parks partway like into the blue stripes so he can get me out of the, the car. Um, if I'm riding with my other son, I usually ride in the back seat. Um, on the driver's side, so it really just it depends how you can get in and out of your vehicle. There are people who are able to drive even if they can't use their legs. I'm not one of them. It's not safe for me to drive because of my hands and my feet. Okay, so um, let's see. Ramps and sidewalks. Ramps that slope so persons do not have to use a step, such as a sidewalk curb, should be flush with the pavement so that it can be is almost seamless. Any gaps between the pavement and the sidewalk can cause injury to a person when using a mobility aid. I know that from experience. Ramps that are broken or below or above the regular sidewalk need to be repaired as they pose a danger to those who are Mobility impaired, and even those who are not. It should be decided who is responsible for the sidewalk and ramps, depending on the location of the ramps and sidewalk. For sidewalks, depending on location, are the some sidewalks, depending on location, are the town's responsibility, and others are the company's responsibility. Businesses within a plaza, it should be determined if the sidewalk and ramps are the company who owns the plaza itself, or if the individual shops are responsible for those in front of their business. The same goes for sidewalks and ramps in front of persons' residences. Apartments, townhouses, condos, and residential complex sidewalks should be the responsibility of the company who owns the property or if the individual property is owned by the resident and is the responsibility of the owner of the property and if there is a sidewalk or a ramp connected to their property. Um, safe exits in case of emergency. If 
a person is mobility impaired and the building um, they are in has multiple floors, in case of emergency such as fire, elevators cannot be used and the only exit strategy is stairs. There should be some type of non-closure lift that you allows for a both a manual and automatic use that does not use electricity. Um, I live on the fourth floor of my apartment complex. Um, if I was, uh, if my building was on fire and I needed to leave, um, I would literally have to be carried down the stairs. Um, and my wheelchair would have to be brought by someone else as well. So I would be able to get out of the building because you can't use an elevator and there are no lifts. Um, so that was something that I've always thought of, uh, you know, eventually if we move out and I want to move to a, you know, like a floor, a ground floor apartment or something like that. Next one. Um, Public stores, corporation or privately owned one, um, should be accessible with an automatic door or button that opens the door on both the entrance and exit. Stores should not have display cases in front of the entrance, so it is easier to maneuver around in a wheelchair or some type of mobility aid like a walker or mobility scooter. A note that in a chair, it is easier to enter or exit a door if the door pushes out rather than having to pull the door open and then maneuver around it. Sometimes I use my legs to do this, but if I was paralyzed, I would not be able to do that. Note, the average cost to make an automatic door is around $3,000. On Amazon, just as an example, I can bury, yes, yeah, I can bury, I can buy a handicap button, the type you press to open the door when you are mobility impaired, and many doctor's offices have these, and banks do, I noticed that too, for only $199. My video series is on YouTube, and I will be doing more videos of my journeys around where I live and the good points and bad points of areas where anyone, no matter if they have a disability or not, would be able to access or not. I have sent several letters to government officials and disability advocates. I, some have responded, some have yet to respond, but I've been sending them periodically. I have been also taking photos of areas that are of danger to anyone walking on the sidewalk, or try to access the sidewalk. I live in Malta and I let the sidewalks take me and my mobility scooter as far as they will go. And this includes public areas and public access. Thank you for your time. So, yes, I know it's a long letter, um, but I think it, um, yes, it may be long and I can be very long winded, which I already know. And I am really good at stating the obvious. However, I'm just going to read these two responses and hopefully um, I'll get more responses. And if not, um, if you have any suggestions for people that I could contact, uh, I would appreciate you letting me know. So the, my first response I got was from James Tedesco. He is a Senator in New York State. Amy, thank you for your recent note related to the greater maintenance of and access, access to wheelchair ramps and accompanying links. All your points are well taken, and I would be remiss if I did not commend you for your courage and advocacy. Thank you, Jen. As you articulated in your email, there are many obstacles to obtaining durable medical equipment via insurance companies. I've always said the main job of an elected official is to remove obstacles and empower people to be everything they can be with their God-given talents. You've also raised some good points regarding automatic doors. While many rules and regulations promulgated, promulgated by the American Disabilities Acts are based on actions at the federal level, I will share your thoughts and concerns with my legislative colleagues. I will also speak with local leaders within towns of my Senate district with an eye keep on ensuring those street ramps are well maintained. Thank you again for reaching out and keeping me informed. Thank you, Mr. Tedesco. And my next email was from Cynthia Young, and she happens to be the Malta Town Supervisor. Um, I appreciate, dear, hi, Amy, I appreciate you sharing your story with me and commend you on your mission of promoting advocacy for mobility impaired persons. 
The Town of Malta is always in a state of improvement and continues to stay on top of current compliance. We have applied for and received grants to improve our pedestrian access. We will soon start construction on a pedestrian crossing on Route 9 in front of Ellsworth Commons. And Ellsworth Commons is the apartment complex where I currently live in. Um, this will include a median crosswalk with lighted beacons. We also received a grant for $1.6 million to build a multi-use trail from Tadeo to Stonebreak Road. I, our hope is to extend the trail all the way to the bypass in Zim and the Zim Smith. On your journey around town, if you believe something is out of code, please contact our code enforcement office. And just as a final note that um, once I'm feeling better and I do go out and about, um, of course, those will be videoed. And if I see anything, I will be reporting anything in um, checking it out uh, about uh, for the particular codes. And if they uh, certain things do not meet the codes, I will be contacting code enforcement. Um, so thank you very much for watching. And I appreciate um, that you are watching. Please subscribe. You can go to my Facebook page, like it, please. Uh, sh also share with uh, um, your friends and family. Um, who knows? Maybe someone else agrees with what I'm thinking about. This has been Amy Shannon for Exposed Mobility Impaired. Mm -hmm.